coming up on the show right now. We have a really cool guest. Uh, he has worked on a bunch of really cool projects that I know you have watched that we will dive into a little bit. But predominantly the, on the show today, we're going to be talking about his newest work out on Shutter right now. It is called Night's End, and it is pretty uh, freaking creepy, I will say. Uh, but we have with us the cinematographer for that film, Chris Rado. How are you doing today, man? Doing great. Doing great. Thank you. This movie, I mean, y'all playing with my heartstrings immediately, anything supernatural. <laughs> come in, come in, my wife and I, we live in an extremely actively haunted house. Oh, and all right. So, <laughs> uh, like, we're talking full body apparitions walking down our hallway, all kinds of crazy crap goes on. Oh, man. And so, anything that uh, is. A, uh, I guess to call it a reprieve isn't necessarily the right verbiage, but uh, anything that is like a fun uh, ghost story, uh, supernatural story is always on the top of my list when it comes to horror films. Sure. And this thing is uh, definitely that. So tell me a little bit about how you came to work on it. Sure. Um, the director, Jennifer Reeder, I've worked with a bunch. We've, um, we've done, I think that was our third feature film. Nice. Third feature film. And we've been, we met about almost 10 years ago, nine years ago. Uh, so we did, we've done shorts, like I think seven, eight, nine, I don't know, even know how many short films we've done. So three feature films and, you know, so it had been, uh, I think the last film we did came out in 2019. And then kind of as COVID came around, we were kind of waiting to see what the next project would, would be. Sure. And uh, so, yeah, we just kind of, uh, we're just kind of hovering. We we're trying to get a short together, but you know, with everything going in 2020, it was a little tough, but um, yeah. as it, she, um, she was approached with a script by the writer, Brett uh, Nouveau. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, he brought the script to her and she was into it. Um, Jennifer has been kind of, um, doing a lot of stuff in horror lately. She worked on VHS 94 uh, recently, and she just wrapped on another film uh, just, just last week. So she's, um, you know, so she brought this film and uh, brought this film to me. And I was like, this sounds fun. I mean, you know, it's a little different from some of the stuff we've done, but a lot of the themes, a lot of the visuals, a lot of the look is still kind of similar to the worlds we work in together. So mm. So yeah, it was just kind of like uh, like someone brought it to her, she brought it to me, and then we kind of went from there. So it was great. How is that as a cinematographer? Because every time I, I interview a cinematographer or director that has like the rapport with each other, multiple works together, it always yeah. seems like that is like the the golden ticket because you guys know what yeah. you want already going in and like pre-production and everything. You kind of already right. have that vibe. Yeah, I mean, I think that's one of the great things about working. You know, it's, it's, there's, I always say there's kind of like a shorthand that we have, you know, like if there's a certain, you know, if there's a certain lighting look that we're into that we've used before, we may kind of implement that again. Or, you know, colors tend to play a big um, part in, in um, productions that we do together. So uh, whether it's the lighting or just, you know, in the, in the production design and stuff like that. So, you know, we, we uh, it just works really well. We have a really good, um, I guess we, we have the same, a certain amount of same influences to a degree. Mm -hmm. So I think that that also helps because if someone, you know, says, you know, oh, we want to do like an overhead shot, kind of like, you know, say, the movie safe or something like that, you know, that's, the kind of thing where we kind of get it and it's like just a quick little shorthand where we're like, oh, okay, cool. So the, this film too, I interviewed a director a couple of years ago okay. who was, uh, she was, is a indie horror director who's had some success, but one of the biggest lessons she taught me right before going into to film school and it still rings true to this day is do more with less. And the way that you and uh, Jennifer set up some of these shots and made it creepy, it was like you made this creepy in 
like the set the the movie itself it all takes place like basically within his apartment Mm -hmm. and there isn't like an extravagant uh monster until really the the climax of this film and it's all just like the the actors and creepy lighting effects and subtlety and it's very it's almost like a modern day Hitchcockian vibe where it's not like a, a super like in your face scare. It's very like a slow burn intense feeling. It was re- very cool. Like, did you guys know from the get that like, that's what you guys were kind of going for? Like that slow burn, like as the protagonist is like descending more and more, like losing it more and more. You know, I think, I think that, that going look the way the script was written i mean there's a lot of dialogue and it's a lot of you know i mean we could have shot one straight shot the whole time of like of a webcam for the whole movie and it would have been like a webcam you know style horror film but you know i think we try to do our best to be really um make really dynamic frames for everything Mm -hmm. so within those frames that become really repetitive I, i think there were subtleties that we that we use like whether or not we'd frame them hard to the you know to right to his to his nose on the edge of frame or a little more space and i think psychologically that gives the viewer a little feel that something might happen so that i think it kind of builds a little tension as they're watching mm-hmm. because they know that they're in a horror film and i think that just that slight bit of thing where people even at, we had a screen in here and people were like i kept waiting for something to jump out and when it didn't it was even better i'm like yeah. mm-hmm. you know it's just stuff like that where we just kind of I unintentionally play with the audience, but we also, you know, um, I think because we used a webcam for a, for a good amount of footage of him for a front mm-hmm. angle, I think that automatically puts the viewer into a POV of what he is. He's a POV of his world. So we kind of see what they're, you know, what's happening in his world behind him. Mm-hmm. I think that even adds a little bit of creep value to it. Cause you're almost like, Hey, look behind you or look, you know, there's something happening behind you. And, you know, I think that um, I think that kind of helps to also make a really dynamic, um, you know, look to the film. Even though, even though a lot of the shots are similar in structure, similar in position, very repetitious um, things to like build up the routine of his of his life, that kind of thing. But um, I think we I think we did a, a good job of keeping it dynamic despite that. The yeah, I mean his work in that film is pretty, pretty spot on. And it's, it's almost, it is not even almost, it is coincidental that you were a second AD on the new Candyman. Uh-huh. Um, and that version second, of the- Yeah, second unit DP, right? Yeah, yeah second, sorry, second, yeah, yeah. unit DP. Uh, yeah. But that version of Candyman, it deals with like, him slowly like de- like losing his mind too and i was yeah, seeing a lot of similars in the performance uh yeah. from yeah. night's end to it's a candy man 2021 where it was dealing with like this internal struggle and i mean this you know, the character here uh you can already you tell like right off the bat he's he, he has his coping mechanism his countdown mm-hmm. you know that 10 9 8 7 yeah. 6 and uh I thought that the way that he portrayed that character really, really made that film that much more impactful. What what was it like getting to uh, work with him? You know, Gino, Gino is great. He's, um, he's a Chicago actor. And I actually had just met, I actually just worked some like the week before we started. I hadn't even met him yet on another TV show he was doing. He had like, he was there for like one scene. Um, He's in this show called Southside here in Chicago. Mm. And uh, I kind of worked with him for a second, but I didn't even get to talk to him. Like, oh, there goes Gino. So I didn't really get to see, meet him until like just before, you know, just for like our kind of like rehearsals the night before. And I mean, he's he's great. He took that script, you know, from what that script was initially. He I think he like kind of next leveled it with yeah. his performance. Um, I think he really pushed it. And I there was some, I feel like there's also some performance that not, cut out or anything like that i think it's just there's a lot of it so there's some stuff that was really you know just watching him work was it was like it was pretty astounding he was uh super professional and super i mean he's just right there i mean there's even a scene where he's in the shower um and he's in the shower and we did like four takes of it or something like that 
and the location we shot in didn't have hot water and we didn't know that there was no hot water for these shower takes <laughs> until like after like the fourth take he's like you know he's like we got it so there's no hot water i'm like what nobody checked that so it was kind of funny so we did like three or four takes with cold water and uh i mean grant you know it was july in chicago and we were all jammed into this like small apartment you know um so it was pretty hot anyways but still i mean three or four takes in cold water uh, and talk, yeah. <laughs> talk about that location because that was a creepy yeah looking and i'm sure our, you know set decoration had a lot to do with it but yeah. like what what was that like did you get to go out on this on the location scouting at all or what did they already find it um they had the the producers and jennifer i think had scouted a bunch of locations a couple of locations some of them were harder than others to deal with second floor mm. you know it was always tough to bring gear up and down and especially given you know we're a smaller indie crew so we don't you know we don't want to kill everyone bringing gear up and downstairs all day yeah. But um, they found this place, which ended up being really great. It was like first floor and, um, you know, it was an apartment. I think it was a one, two, three, apart, three bedroom apartment. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the toughest thing is that we, we camped out there. Every shot, every, everything in that film is shot at that house. All the locations of like the other people on webcams, we just shot in other rooms with like different backgrounds. Oh, no and kidding. We, yeah. So we just kind of faked a lot of stuff. So yeah, it was, you know. I mean, we were truly like independent filmmaking at that point because we were like, this is our location and we're going to make it work. And, you know, given it was webcam stuff, it wasn't, you know, the other locations are, or the other characters, they're all just webcams. So we don't have to worry about continuity and stuff like that as much. So, yeah. But even the exterior we shot there, um, we basically staged all our stuff in each room that wasn't being shot. So if it wasn't being photographed, wardrobe, hair and makeup, you know, some grip stuff was all in one room. And when we have to go to that room or look towards that room, we have to like flip everything around, kind of shuffle everything into another room. So it was cool. I mean, we got real intimate, you know, we were real tight in space and it got hot and a lot of stuff we shot, um, you know, day for night. So we, you know, we were blacking windows out and stuff like that. So yeah, it was, uh, it got real hot in there for sure. <laughs> How was that? Uh, doing that because that's always the vein of my existence like i'd rather just wait for the sun to go down <laughs> right. than then blacking windows out and all that so yeah how, how was that you know just a matter of getting it all figured out type of a thing basically yeah i mean we did a good i mean we did a really good job of um scheduling stuff to work to our advantage where we weren't shooting with direct light coming in so we could kill the indirect light without totally blacking out. So we could still push some lights through windows and had a really great lighting crew. Um, Gaffer, David Lukasik, who I've worked with for many years, um, did a great job. And his crew was, they were, they worked really hard. I mean, we had, you know, there were some, there were some not long days, but they were hard days. You know, we moved stuff around a lot in that place. And once you, then you got to come into the room, into the house, which is really dark and kind of shuffle around in there. So that got really, um, you know, it just gets, there's a lot of work to be done, but they did a they did a really good job of keeping it consistent. And I think that lighting, you know, obviously the lighting looks amazing for a lot of the sequences. So I actually really did dug the shots of him when it is daylight and the newspapers are on the window. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was a, a really cool aesthetic where this guy again, it was kind of another testament to his character where yeah, he recovering from alcoholism and mm -hmm. kind of getting a divorce. Um, and uh, it was like, he's not even to the point yet mentally where he cares about putting up drapes or anything. He's, sure, just, yeah. he's just tacking on the, the papers. Uh, what was your favorite scene to film on this guy? Oh man. Um, you know, there's kind of the scene where he's, he's kind of like breaking down. It's like more of a handheld scene where I'm like, coming down the hallway with him and we only did like two or three takes of it. He's kind of freaking out and flipping the bed around and like, mm -hmm. you know, there's, we're just kind of like whipping around the room. I always like those kind of sequences because it, um, because everything else is so still in the film, almost like a photograph. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of time it's like an overly composed photograph that to be able to change to that, change over to that kind of like really free verite kind of handheld moment feels really good. And I think that he did a good job of like kind of moving around the room and um, 
and you know it was, it was nice to like just follow him I mean, he did some that sequence is actually pretty long too like you got kind of like underneath the mattress kind of in this little fortress and i like ducked down in there and stuff but we didn't they didn't use that much of the f footage but um we did a couple takes of it and that was really cool energy i think but i think probably some of my favorite stuff for the scares you know just because um you know some of the stuff with like at the door and all the door stuff is really cool because i mean that's probably i would say the most traditional kind of like horror stuff yeah. you know that you're waiting for and then something great you know um but yeah i think you know i think we those those shots are some of my favorite parts in there for sure what was it like working with the webcams as well as a traditional camera yeah Chal uh, challenges easier less yeah. i basically what i did was i used uh i shot most of the film on um on an area alexa and then I shot the webcam stuff on a red Komodo and then red Komodo is like a four by four square camera. So I just put a like photo lens on that and popped it right in front of them. So I could shoot them at the same time, keep mm -hmm. that one out of frame because it's so compact. And I basically was able to do two camera setups almost without having to, you know, to hide one so much. Um, so that kind of saved us some time, gave us extra bit of coverage when we needed it. And, uh, and I think it was really effective because then he didn't have to perform multiple times for some of the sequences so how long did you guys how long were you in there for it's the shooting day shooting yeah 13 days damn yeah that feature took 13 damn. 13 plus a load in and maybe a load out but yeah i mean 13 days you're actively yeah. shooting for 13 days that's yeah, yeah you guys were hustling we were hustling i mean we pumped a lot of pages out a lot of dialogue so um that was another thing we wanted to you know i want to always make sure that we're not we're getting the coverage then we're getting the we're getting the script it's you know really drives me nuts if i have to like you know take time to to do some lighting or or re-rigging camera stuff mm. when we can when we need to get through the script to make the day because it's just you know there's a lot to do and 13 you know we could have easily done that shoot in 20 you know yeah um yeah. 20 would have been super comfortable we could have you know done some extra stuff but you know 13 was like Kind of wild <laughs> yeah i can imagine that yeah. Yeah. i mean you're talking about a, a full-length feature yeah. horror film to shoot that thing in 13 days i mean that is what it is to, for an indie horror film and that is yeah and that's what makes shutter so cool man is the fact that shutter really tries hard it feels like to focus on featuring the newer indie horror stuff like getting yeah. Yeah. getting the indie horror scene that exposure that it deserves to have for sure because horror really does have i think more originality than a lot of other genres in film like mm -hmm. it it seems like a lot of times um, you know romantic comedy my mind just because my wife is such a huge fan instantly goes to like mm -hmm. the lifetime channel it yeah. just seems like a mass produced stamp insert dog stamp yeah. <laughs> insert okay, stamp and it's like yeah. you know horror there's just so many takes like you mm -hmm. could say night's end is a, a, a supernatural story and if you're a horror fan you're like okay that checks one box now here's a list of 20 other boxes For which sure. category does it fall into yeah it's always cool to to be able to check out shutter and you'll never be able to i don't think at least I won't be able to have enough time to like get through the end of their library. Oh stuff man. That they're putting up there. So and, much stuff. Yeah. Um, so what was it, man, that got you uh, wanting to become a cinematographer? What is it a certain movie? Like what, what made you want to do film? You know, I, I, I think that I've always kind of been interested in photography in general. Mm. Um, there was something, something at a young age where I always like, you know, it was like into just imagery that I saw, whether it was like, like music videos and like the early nineties and stuff like that, or, you know, like even like fashion magazines, I was always kind of like into like the photography and it was always like, those seemed a little more edgy for me. Um, mm -hmm. so that was something that I, I enjoy I mean, I, I enjoy traditional, you know, beautiful photography and stuff like that. But I mean, I think stuff with a little bit more uh, tooth to it or a little more, um, there's something a little more out there sometimes. Mm. Um, but I think, 
I think, you know, I went to film school and I initially was got in as a writer director. Mm. And uh, I think I wrote like two screenplays and I was like, man, this is a lot of work writing screenplays. And it was cool. I mean, I, I, I'd done some fiction writing before, but I think once I got into like some groups of like filming stuff and I kind of, because I had a photography background, I kind of, you know, it's the de facto like DP, you know, they're like, here you go. You, <laughs> you take over camera. And I mean, I just kind of fell in love with it, you know, because it was another, it was another way of, of photographing, um, sure. you know, with, with so much more. So, yeah. you know, it, it, uh, it, it just really spoke to me at that point. And um, yeah, I just really, you know, there's so many films like that, you know, really inspired, I guess. Um, but, you know, I, I look at films like, you know, Paris, Texas, um, mm. big film, you know, for me, I love the photography of that film. Um, Seven was a great one when that came out, you know, that was a, yeah, yeah, I mean, gorgeous. Yeah. Um, but, you know, even early films like, um, uh, like uh, Clute, you know, that was a oh, great yeah. movie. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff from like 70s and 80s and, you know, even recent 90s and stuff like that, that I think are, are movies that I'm that are really inspiring to me. Um, but I always say like the film that kind of got me into like independent filmmaking is, was do the right thing. Um, Spike Lee's oh, do yeah. the right thing. Yeah. And I think it was just like, that was a movie where I was like, well, a film that really had no funding, you know, wasn't big, but had this really big message um, and was done like in this like small community, small amount, you know, but was still really powerful. I think that was like one of the first like powerful pieces of, uh, independent cinema that I saw. So that was something that I really, really say that that's the movie that I'm like, I should, I should go to film school. I should consider writing or doing something like that. And that was kind of the one. Right on. I mean, yeah. you have, uh, worked in other genres other than horror. Mm -hmm. Um, what is your, as just like a, a, a consumer of film, you, is horror like you, your vibe or are you more of a, uh, you know, like sci-fi or yeah. action type of a guy? That's, that's interesting. I mean, I like so much of it, but horror allows me a lot of the, the thing about horror films to me is that they can be so much more than gore, so much more than just jump, you know, jump scares and stuff like that. So yeah. much more than killing. I think that there's like, elements of you know film noir obviously and obviously and you know um some kind of experimental film mm -hmm. uh things that can be attached to horror film that i i think really make it um that that make the the genre really full and a lot of like different you know styles yeah. you know you can almost you know obviously like the handheld kind of creepy doc style stuff is really you know like like blair witch or something like that, that i mean those I mean, those are all incorporating other genres to 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 elevate horror film. So I think that's that's one of the things I really like about horror film. Um, I you know I would never say that I would only shoot one or shoot this or shoot that, but um, I right now I'm enjoying it and I'm talking to a couple other people about some horror films now and two or three other horror films and I'm fine with it. It's cool because the scripts <laughs> are you know the scripts are are good. So as long as they um, as long as we can get something interesting going visually, which I think we can, it's, you know, it's always, it always allows a lot of, um, a lot of freedom as a cinematographer, which, you know, I mean, you can do a lot of things and not have a lot of freedoms, you know, I mean, I shoot a lot of commercial work and, and sometimes commercials um, can be a little more, you know, straightforward, a little more, you know, not restricting, but, you know, there's a, there's an element or there's a look to that. You yeah. have to keep consistent. Um, and the ability to really go out there or, you know, to just say, Hey, I want to use these vintage anamorphic lenses and just, you know, get crazy. And a horror film will be like, okay, you know, so, <laughs> yeah. you know, that kind of thing. And, and not necessarily in a commercial will that always come up, um, you know, at least in my experience for me, it's not always that way, but. Yeah. But um, imagine doing commercial work. There is some restrictive nature to that as far <laughs> as if you're shooting an ad, they're not necessarily going to let you put the, uh, 
like a lens that's going to give the aesthetic of Texas chainsaw or anything to it. Although that'd be pretty interesting for a good, for a it, commercial. It would man. Texas chainsaw. Look. You would definitely get it. You would definitely get the attention of the people watching the commercial. hundred uh, percent. Yeah. That's one of my favorite horror films, actually Texas chainsaw massacre. This is great. The yeah. whole, fr the whole franchise really the, I mean, you did Ty West just came out with X a yeah. couple of months ago and that film the from the first frame it's that looks like texas chainsaw totally like he, he's going totally. back to um he's going back old school with it which yeah. is cool yeah that movie was gorgeous i saw it a couple weeks ago yeah it was really great that movie is wild yeah <laughs> that movie is, um the uh the aesthetic of that film is like its own little sub conversation sure. to the actual story within that film yeah it um, really is the uh, is a lot of people, film fans, they always say, like, my favorite director, they follow a director, actor, you know, something is just a pure fan. Do you have a cinematographer that you're like, oh, damn, this guy's behind camera, like, I'm, I'm definitely checking it out? <laughs> yeah, um, you know, as far as like newer contemporary cinematographers, there's so many, so many great cinematographers. That it's hard for me to be like that one. That one is like because they they they're all doing different kinds of work yeah. all the time. It's I mean there's some are some are keeping it the same, but you know I I always say like some of my favorites are like more of like the older cinematographers that are not alive actually, but mm -hmm. uh, they're some of my favorites uh, like Robbie Mueller who shot Paris Texas that I mentioned mm -hmm. earlier, uh, Harris Savitas who shot um, Zodiac and oh, some Gus Van Zandt stuff, you know, like those are some of my favorite, like more like recent, I guess, cinematographers, but yeah, I mean, there's I'm always interested in, in what there's so many new DPs coming out with really great stuff all the time and super innovative um, work. It's, it's, it's mind blowing actually. Cause I mean, with, with TV and all kinds of stuff, it, it's, it's like hard to keep up. I'm like, who shot that? You know, it's, it's yes. crazy, you know, yeah. but uh, it's good. You know, I think that's great. You know, horror has really become prevalent. You said on TV, horror is definitely more prevalent on TV now than yeah. probably ever. Is there a certain, uh, whether it's streaming or traditional cable, like show, scary show right now that you have uh, been digging over the last couple of years? What have I been watching? I haven't been watching many uh, scary series. I think I was watching Walking Dead for a little bit. Okay. But it kind of, you know, I watched it for a long bit, I should say. But there was a point where I was just like, all right, this is getting like crazy. Yeah. I just couldn't, I couldn't hold on for that long. And it wasn't because it was bad or anything. It was just like, it was, I don't know. It was like the slowest of slow burns. And I was just, yeah. like, I was like, okay. Totally. I was, <laughs> I was right there with you. Yeah. It's like, oh, yeah. After they killed Glenn, yeah, a yeah. couple a couple episodes after they killed Glenn, I was just like, man, like okay, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just there's too many too many colonies, too much stuff going on. I was just like, oh god, I can't I can't keep up with it. So, <laughs> but you know, we'll see. Uh, every every now and then, I mean, I haven't watched. I mean, I watch American Horror Story here and there. Mm. Um, yeah, that was been that's been good. Uh, just visually is always beautiful. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know if you've gotten to check out the Hulu. Uh, they did that American Horror Stories where each episode, it was like an anthology. Yeah. That yeah. is worth checking out because right. that they almost they almost do what we've been talking about where each episode is a completely different subgenre. Right. It, that was really well done, I thought. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, well, you mentioned, man, the, the couple of scripts that you – works and negotiations and you know maybe possible future projects is mm -hmm. there something you know coming up next that you can definitively say that like we should be on the lookout for coming out um you know i i have a production that is slated to start sometime this summer we haven't locked in on dates yet mm -hmm. uh it's a film called homesick and mm -hmm. uh it's directed by a chicago director named jim vendiola and it's a kind of supernatural thriller, oh, uh, not so horror fit based, but I mean, it's probably got some elements to that, but I think it's more of a, a thriller kind mm. of thing. And it's, it's kind of like dual time periods too. So that's going to be kind of fun mm -hmm. to kind of play with. And uh, 
yeah, so that that's something we'll shoot this summer, hopefully out, you know, six months from there or whatever. How is the scene in Chicago film wise? Like, is there a pretty good like community of, of filmmaking production t- going on out there? Definitely. I mean, there's so many, you know, uh, we have a really great independent base. Um, mm. And uh, there's a lot of directors, you know, making good stuff here for sure. They're like getting films in the festivals and um, getting noticed and, you know, producing, you know, producers and, and crew is like amazing here in Chicago. Um, you know, we have a, we have a really strong um, tax incentive. So a lot of like, a lot of like television comes here and we have a bunch of stuff like that going on and some, some movies and hasn't been a ton going on here. Um, recently, I think Candyman was one of the bigger ones aside from a couple like weekend things that popped up, you know, popped in and did some, you know, plate shots and stuff like that. But, you know, the independent scene is, is pretty strong. I would say, you know, we have uh, really great, everything, every crew member from producers to PA, they're all good, you know? So before I, I we let you go, I have to yeah. ask you a little bit about working on Candyman because I sure. loved that movie. Yeah, that was that was true, and it seems like in all those seventies and eighties franchises, Halloween, mm-hmm. Candyman, Texas Chainsaw, even uh, Nightmare on Elm Street, they all kind of like run their course until the end of the franchise. It's almost like okay, like maybe it's time to put a bow on this. And I thought this was like. Yeah, perfect rehash, right? To like modernize it, but also go back. So what what was this being on that set and getting to work on that film like for you? And, you know, for me, it was great. I was uh, my friend, uh, my friend John Galasarian, who is the DP for the film, and we knew each other from film school years ago. Mm. So when he came in that summer to shoot it, they had some second unit stuff pop up, and he told the producers like, he's like, hey, you should call Chris. You know, he's here. I'd love for Chris to shoot second unit. Super generous, super great. Hadn't seen him in a couple of years and uh, I came out and shot some stuff. And uh, the whole crew, I mean, the producers were like, any friend of John's is, you know, we trust him. And so that was really cool. And they welcomed me. And uh, um, it was it was a good feeling to be part of something that was Chicago based, mm-hmm. but not Chicago exploitive if that makes sense. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, you know, so that I think that was, that felt really nice to, to have someone do something that seemed to change like the narrative of like, of like what a horror horror film could be and what true horrors are, you know, the true horror of, you know, is um, Mm -hmm. particularly for like someone in this film and the characters of the film. Um, I mean, visually, you know, it was, they had some really great ideas coming into it. And a lot of stuff were, were things that I just kind of expanded on, um, you know, their initial ideas. And when I came in, I just kind of took, took it and ran with what they, you know, suggested and what I, you know, the director I worked with, I worked with the, um, with Nia DaCosta. Mm-hmm. I shot second unit stuff and I worked with their VFX, um, uh, VFX man for the, for all the other stuff like the green screen stuff and all the driving and the upside down, you know, footage yeah, yeah. of the city, you know, in the beginning with all the, yeah. So all that upside down stuff was great. We just spent a whole night with the Russian arm, just driving through the city, you know, That's overnight. Cool. Yeah. It was fun. Yeah. fun. You just like drive down the, cause you can drive under the city in Chicago and, you know, the lower Wacker and you had some really great shots where we just kind of come up and see the city through the fog, that kind of stuff. So yeah, but, the aesthetic that they put together on that film was just top notch. Yeah. Incredible. Uh, incredible. You know, nights and when people go into this film, what, what would be like your, you know, almost like your uh, synopsis at the, on the back of the, of the old VHS cover? Like, what do you think like people are going to get, would you say out of this film? Cause I can sit here and tell you, you know, it's a, <laughs> like a great, like, dudes descending into madness but there right. are twists into it but like what what are you having shot the thing what would you say you know i would say that i hope that people come out of this film feeling that they've witnessed you know they witnessed this kind of like you said a descent into madness but i think it's also something based in this like trauma of, of his divorce his yeah. alcoholism and then i mean there's kind of this unspoken thing where he's isolated and it's it's a hard, it, 
do we talk about whether he's agoraphobic or do we talk about whether there's a pandemic going on? Because we all came out of the pandemic. We all came out of lockdown. So this film was, this film was birthed in that, in that season of, of lockdown. So um, I think uh, that a lot of people identify with the feelings he has where it's like this, you know, we had those days of repetitious life where we were just like, make our coffee, go sit there, maybe zoom with somebody. And it just kind of was like, I think that's something that many people identify with. And they're like, man, that was what lockdown was with me. I just kind of lost my mind. And, you know, and then, you know, I don't, I don't know that we trick anybody and say, oh, maybe he's imagining that, you know, there's all these, this possession or these spirits in his house. But I think that, that um, the feeling of, of being isolated, like we, we all were in some degree, to some degree, uh, sure. is something that I hope people can pull, pull from that film and kind of look, look to their, their experiences. And, uh, yeah, that's a great, that's a great, great call. Actually, the because I there were definitely days during the lockdown <laughs> that I could relate to <laughs> that, like that scene where he's just shouting. Yeah, <laughs> and, um, the uh, the film is out on Shutter Nights, and it is a very, very creepy, well done, put together film. Man, so again, congratulations to you and everybody behind that thing. And uh, tell everybody where they can kind of track you, though, before we, we let you go so they can keep up on what you're doing next. Uh, well, you can keep uh, keep an eye on my Instagram. Uh, yeah. It's just Rahano, at Rahano, just my last name. Uh, you can follow me there. You can follow me uh, on my website. And, uh, yeah, just keep an eye out for stuff. I'm always, always posting, always trying to put stuff up despite the, uh, you know, when the producers tell me not to. So. <laughs> 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 to try to try to get as close to the NDA as possible. So, you know. Well, right on, man. We thank you very much for taking the time out to talk to us. And uh, we will look forward to what you've got coming up down the pipeline here. All right. Thanks so much.